Now we're looking at the last example in 5.1. Um, in the parentheses, we have negative 36 x squared y cubed divided by negative 4 x to the fifth y to the seventh and raise it to ne the negative second power. Now, uh, there are two possible ways that we can do. One of them is uh, easier than the other. Uh, remember one of those five formulas we had, uh, because this one actually involves division. Uh, so the better way to do it is to follow the order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Uh, in this case, we don't have any addition and subtraction, um, but we have all the other ones. So we're going to follow the order of operations to work out what's in the parentheses first. And some of the students might see that uh, uh, there is multiplication in the base and there is also division in the base. As we talked about it before, if we have multiplication in the base, we can distribute the exponent to each one. Or if we have division in the base, we can also distribute the exponent to each one. So we, we technically, yes, we can distribute the, the negative second power to everything inside. To negative 36, to x squared, to y cubed, to negative 4, to x fifth, to y to six, 7. But that's a lot of work. We got to do that like six times. So we're not going to do this way. We're going to just follow the order of operations. So some problems do have more than one way, and, but... Uh, one of the ways might be uh, more efficient than the other. Okay, so in this case, if we follow the order of operations, we work out what's in the parentheses. In the parentheses, it's division. We're going to follow the division rule. We divide these two numbers, negative 36 divided by negative 4, positive 9. Now we divide x squared by x to the fifth. Now over here, there are two possible ways to do that. So I'm going to write it next, right here. How do we do x to the second divided by x to the fifth? If we apply the formula of division, x to the nth divided by x to the nth equals, uh, you keep the base m and subtract the exponents, and it's top minus the bottom. So you, we can get x to the second minus fifth, the top exponent minus the bottom, we get x to negative three. And what x to negative third power mean? It means 1 over x to the third. So that's one way to do it. And the other way is um, we could, we can kind of like a cancellation. So the top has two copies, bottom has five copies. We can cancel the top two copies, like x times x on the top, x times x times x times x, five copies on the bottom. We can cancel two of them, and we'll be left with three copies of x, which is exactly x to the third again. So we're going to get the same thing, 1 over x cubed, because these two top, top x's are canceled. Nothing left, we'll put a 1 there to hold that place. So either way, we're going to get the same answer. But I will use the first way to apply the formula. So we do the top, keep the base x, we do the top exponent 2 minus the bottom 5, again negative 3. And the reason I do this is um, you, we, we didn't have to, right now, we didn't have to get rid of the negative to get uh, the fractional form. We can always do that in the final answer. So we continue to do the next part by applying the formula. 3 minus 7, negative 4. Again, I'm not going to... Uh, flip them to get rid of negatives, yet I would do that in the final step because there's something else we got to do. We got to raise this to a negative second power. So now we can use the formula. If there is multiplication in the base, we distribute the exponent to each one. So we do have to be careful when in the base we have a lot of multiplication, times here, times here, two times. We have to use this distribute negative second power to all three of them, including 9. Okay, so if there's a multiplication, we're supposed to raise each one, we call them factors, each one to the sec outside. Not because this, they have exponents. 
uh, even 9 does not have exponents, we still have to raise 9 to the negative second because of the formula. The formula says multiplication inside, raise each one to the outside exponent. So we're going to raise 9 to negative 2. And then we raise x to uh, raise x to the negative third x to negative third to negative second and then we raise y to the negative fourth to negative second and sometimes if you feel comfortable you can do this step in your head you can do that you can skip writing this down but it's, it might be, uh, the problem is some students, when they do this in head, they only remember multiplying the exponents. They forgot they are supposed to raise 9 also to the negative second. Um, so I wouldn't skip this step if you don't feel that you are very confident about this step. Okay, so now, uh, for the numbers, there are no formulas. We just have to go by definition. So 9 raised to negative 2, by the definition, temporarily ignore the negative in the exponent we got 9 squared and 9 squared is equal to 81 and if we put the negative sign in here it means you gotta flip 81 so 9 to negative 2 we gotta flip 81 to get a 1 over 81 now the second part we have formulas when we have two ne exponents right next to each other we multiply them so we keep the base x we multiply negative 3 times negative 2. By the way, this is negative here. Copy it down from, from here. So it's negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 2. That gives us a positive 6. And then we have negative 4 raised to negative 2, which gives us a y to the 8th. Negative 4 times negative 2. And as you can, as you can see, that's why I did not flip those um, to get rid of negatives. Because after you raise a negative to another negative, you make my negatives times negatives, you get positive. You may not need to flip it anymore. And so that's the final answer. So the tip is for this kind of question, we always apply those five formulas first, exponential rules. And then when we get the final answer, if there are any negatives, you can get rid of them. Um, and if there are no negatives, then you don't have to do anything.